towards the end of the cage from Tajikistan, Kasim. Right here we have the next fighter from Tajikistan, the welterweight Kosim Sardorov. And yesterday he was nothing short of completely dominant. He just completely handled England's Reese Treesdale for three rounds from top position, securing a comfortable unanimous decision victory and thereby securing his place here in the finals today. It will be interesting to see if he can be quite as dominant on the top row. I suspect it will be much more a much more hard-fought battle. And Tajikistan very animated after their last fighter received a decision loss. But they are still here in full support of Kozim. Like you said, very convincing in our semis. And now we move up to welterweights as well so bigger boys bigger guys in there a lot more power possessed this is when the action gets really exciting any moment when you get above the 70 kilo 77 kilo mark that's when you carry real power in the hands i mean i say that we had an <laughs> atom weight knockout yeah. in our first fight but i feel like now the the margin of error becomes a little bit smaller as every weight class we go up you, you cannot make mistakes because one one punch can end the fight. And now please welcome his opponent, representing our MMAU, Vladislav Sukalenko! All right, and in the red corner, we have the RMMAU's Vladislav Sukalenko, as mentioned earlier, and I'm sure it will be mentioned Later on as well, Russia, uh, the RMMAU, on a real tear here. Nine gold medals so far. Very, very impressive. Can Vladislav Sukalenko make it 10? And like you said, Luke, a lot or definitely more power on display here. But like you said, the margin forever, much, much smaller. And anything truly can happen in MMA. So they've got a mind of P's and Q's. I mean, look at Sukalenko's back. Look at the size of this guy. Yeah. And he's got, I, I didn't see his age, but he's in the Junior World Championships. So between the age of 18 and 20 years old, looks like he could carry a fridge. Yeah, these are some very well-conditioned athletes. You can tell that, you know, they haven't skipped any days at the gym, I'm sure. So two very wrestling heavy nations, Tajikistan and the RMMAU. Sukalenko has explosive hands as well. You know, what a decision to get here, but he definitely can put the fight out any second, finish the fight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, IMAP presents three female runs in the junior welterweight final. Introducing first in the blue corner, representing Tajikistan, Kasi. All right, Matthias Quedan in charge of this Walter Waite final here at the 2021 IMAF World Championships. And you can really hear the fans from Tajikistan letting their support for Kosom Sardorov rain into the cage. Vladislav enjoying it though, smile on the face. Intimidating guy comes forward, likes to bang. And yeah, that's the thing, um, like we said before, there are so many ways that you can cut it. You could be broken down by some of that by the booze, or you can embrace it. You can say, you know what, you can boo me all you want. I'm going to beat your guy. And that seems to be the energy that Vladislav Sukalenko brings here tonight. Needs to be careful moving left. Does cost him. Going to move into that powerful right hand of Sukalenko. Sukalenko really put it on some good pressure here early, staying very mobile. 
Uh, Kosim almost looks a little bit in intimidated and worried here about the power. <laughs> Doesn't want to make a mistake, overthinking it maybe a little bit. And a little bit of gamesmanship here from Sukalenko. Stuck his tongue out at his opponent, smiling a little bit here and there. Definitely seems confident, and he should be. Oh, that was a nice left hand connect there for the Russian neutral athlete. Oh, yeah, follows the uppercut right, backhand uppercut left hook. Beautiful little combo there from Sukolenko. He brings the, I was Oof. just about to say, he brings the kicks up well as well. A little bit too high though, goes over the head. Little cut on the eye. Yeah, this early too, I mean, that could be problematic if we do go into the later rounds. I mean, it doesn't necessarily seem to be in the most, in the worst spot, but you don't want that at the start of the first round. Kosim just seems to be double guessing himself at the moment, questioning every movement. There's just a, the confidence you can feel exuding from Sukolenko. He, he just seems in completely control of this fight so far. Every time he steps forward, Kosim steps back. He's buying on every feint and just looking to try and get hold of those legs. No. Southpaw stance, switching Sukolenko back to Orthodox. And I mean, so much about MMA, it's also like heart and it's about mental you know who can have a mental advantage who can have the momentum swing in their in their favor just in terms of confidence see take down attempt here for the russian neutral athlete the sukolenko deep in on this single leg attempt gives it up to cause some damage needs to be careful of the hips of kosim as kosim laces that leg uses it well to try and escape oh. Looked like we were going to see a trip there for a moment, but defense holding up for Tajikistan's Kosim Sargarov. <laughs> Boom! Slam, bam. Thank you, man. There's the takedown. Gets straight back up, though, does Kosim. Kosim getting reversed as well. He's actually the one trying to initiate that takedown. But Sukolenko aware of it and goes backwards with it. So when you see Kosim lace that leg, we'll see it hopefully in the highlights on the takedown. Kosim's lacing the leg to try and do a trip, try and do a throw, you know, a, a hip toss. But when he goes to do the hip toss, we see him get taken back the other way. Here we see that uppercut, left hook, land. A little bit high here, I feel, um, is the posture of Kosim. Nice spin off right hand on the break, too. And the momentum definitely just seems to be in Sukalenko's favor. So here, hopefully, we get to see the lace of the leg. Not quite long enough there on the highlights for us. And Luke, if you were in Sardaro's corner, what would you be telling him now between rounds? We need to see, so you need to go first. You can't wait for Sukalenko. Sukalenko is intimidating and he, he, he's baiting you and fainting and moving and you kind of freeze up. We need you to throw a jab, use that length. You're a long guy. Let's see you go first. You dictate the pace. Don't just wait on Sukolenko's action. Great advice. I would definitely like to have you in my corner if I ever thought. One day. One day. We'll make <laughs> it happen. Hey, Sukolenko comes out in the red, taking on that Kosim Sadarova in the blue from Tajikistan. Smiles there. Intimidating is Sukolenko. Again, we need to see some urgency from the man from Tajikistan. Yeah, I think perhaps some jabs or something like that. Just a little bit of offense, even if it's not going to knock your opponent out. Just, oh, that was a nice little two-punch combination where it lands for Sukalenko. Switch of stance, left head kick, switch back. I expect to see Sukalenko really come alive in this second round. Seems extremely comfortable in there. Swing and a miss. That was like something you'd see at a baseball match. And I like how Sukalenko kind of threats, just showing that uppercut every now and then, just reminding his opponent, you can shoot, but it might cost you. That's all he wants to do. Manages to get oh. this, though, comes high, builds the posture. Maybe he's going to convert this takedown. Comes on the back door, hang on the ankle lace. Very good work here. Relentless from Tajikistan. Needed that, really needed that in this second round. We're not even halfway in. So that's very important here. See if Sukalenko can try and work back to his feet. 
And just, if nothing else, this will be great for Kosim's uh, confidence going forward. Yeah, Kosim, very desperate here to keep this on the mat. Good forward pressure. Bellies out, does Sukolenko, but has a heavy whizzer. Gives up on that whizzer and gives up his back. This is very good for Kosim. Big knee. Works well back to his feet, though. Does Sukolenko. And Kosim Sardar of fighting like he had Luke Barnett in his corner. Yeah, come out with a lot more urgency in this round. Doing well, and you see how he has that left arm laced all the way around, controlling that wrist. That's a great position to land some damage. Oh! Oh, that's got to hurt the shoulder on that toss as well. See how he crossed hold of that leg? That's clever. Shelving it on the leg. Good builds back up. Some beautiful grappling display by Kosim. Kosim just, I, I just feel the, the nervous, desperate energy from him. He does not want Sukolenko to make himself get off this fence. And that can burn you out. That can really tie you down. Yeah, absolutely. You got to be careful with how you manage your energy. I mean, even if he wins this round, what if you come into the third round with an empty tank? So there's so much to take into consideration here. Yeah, Sukolenko here just relaxing, good balance, nice hips. No, not nowhere near to convert in these. Here's Kosim. So, okay, good knees now on the inside. That's a little bit better. But now Sukolenko's free. Smile from him, and we're back to work. Good round, better round from Kosim. Definitely got the fight in the area that he wanted it to be. But for me, Sukolenko is the only one looking dangerous enough to finish this fight thus far. And would you say it's one round of peace here heading into the third and final round? I mean, I'm not sure I, li I like keep, keep being asked about the judges because uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to do two jobs in one night. But <laughs> it's very close. I feel like not so much damage from Kosim, but manages to convert that takedown. These head kicks, that was nice. shots as well. Sukolenko looking dangerous. But once he managed to get that takedown, it was all Kosim. A much closer second round. be very interesting to see who takes a command when the third round commences after all a good start to that round could be all you need to seal the deal for victory and I'm glad that the, the cut in uh, Sar under Sardaro's eye not really coming into play as much as I thought it might yeah it was early in the first but doesn't seem to bother him as we move now into our third and final round big big grin <laughs> On the face of Sukalenko. I'm no. digging that Sukalenko smile, I'll tell you that. Enjoying his moment here in our 2021 World Championship final. <laughs> nice little combination there. Nothing that lands with authority, but at least a little something in terms of offense anyway. You're throwing left and left, left hook, left high kick. That's nice to see. Maybe he's going to do it on the right-hand side as well. Right hand, right kick. That's a real development. You see old-school Thai boxers, they always throw left to right to yeah. try and create more damage. Left, right, left, right, or right, left, right, left. Now in MMA, TJ Dillashaw, I feel like, was the first guy to do it with Dwayne Bang Ludwig. But they were throwing right side, right side, left side, left side, you know? Yeah, true. And if you're trained in the traditional sense, you're expecting it to go left, right, or right, left, and it can really catch you off guard. Well, like so many other aspects of MMA, disguising things for your opponent is imperative for success. If you are predictable, then you are in danger of being defeated. Yeah, like that was a very predictable takedown attempt there. But just relentless pressure from Kosim. He knows once he gets connection, he can try and make something happen. Good Kimura grip here for Sukolenko, though, on that right arm. Am? Am I from Boston? That right arm. Of Kosim. All right. Sort of gets his arm out of danger. To see if he can perhaps get a secure a takedown, which may very well secure a gold medal as well. Yeah, not so much action here as we come into the midway point of this third round. Great work from Sukolenko, but stuck to him like glue. Rest Kosim. Relentless. Oh, offense here in terms of wrestling from the Tajikistani fighter Kosim Sardarov. Big boos coming from Tajikistan. They feel like uh, 
the RMA U athlete was grabbing the kick the cage. I feel like he was as well, recognized by the referee though. I love how he's grabbing hold of this far angle. That yeah. makes life so difficult to get up. But Sokolenko does everything he needs to, rotates well, stands back to his feet. And the thing is, you know, it's not about who's the cockiest and who has the biggest smile. I mean, it's how about how you handle the things inside the cage. And I'd say so far, Sardarov coming back from a tough first round, he really has done a very good job at establishing himself in the fight. Yeah, it cost him having a more success in this second and third round, but more pressure, more takedown attempts, nothing too convincing, not come close to finishing this fight. As we've seen through the way that, that they score here at IMAP, damage. Damage is number one, the most crucial, crucial. Good balance on display here from Sukolenko as we come to the final seconds of this fight. Okay, there we have the three rounds in the books. And once again, the judges will be called upon to decide who leaves here with the gold. Will it be Tajikistan's Kostim Sardarov in the blue corner? or the RMMAU's Vladislav Sukalenko in the red. Well, this will be the fourth decision in a row when we've been commentating, and they've all had an RMMAU athlete <laughs> take away that decision victory. Shows you the tactical approach of them. Hard job here for IMAF judges. Yeah, well, if MMA judging was easy, everyone would do it. Don't envy their job here tonight. The scores are being collected here, cage side. Mm. I'm hoping Ricky Wright isn't the one that adds them up because I wouldn't trust it <laughs> to save my life as he comes waltzing up here to get into our cage. The proud Welsh dragon, Ricky Wright. Okay, there you have it. The striking of Vladislav Sukalenko in combination with his defensive wrestling was enough to seal victory here. Luke, what are your thoughts on the fight? Rubbing salt in the wound of the Tajikistanis. <laughs> That's two times they've gone to decision today with our MMAU. And both times they have failed to convert into a gold medal. They take home two silvers. And I think that's 10 now for our MMAU. We will now move over to a short medal Ladies ceremony. Please turn your attention to the stage. We are going to be continuing the medal ceremony for tonight. To present the medals for the women's junior featherweight category. Please help me welcome.